Jesus. The Lord is good to us. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good to us. I'm just going to ask you, I know we've all got prayer requests this morning. If you've got a need for prayer this morning, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand toward heaven there this morning. He already knows what you have need of before you even raise your hand up. He knows what's going on in your life. If it's a sickness, if it's a hurt, a heartache, if a, it's a family situation, if it's a crisis going on in life, it's a financial struggle, something going on this morning, guess what? He already knows, Brother Marty. He already knows. He just wants you to be faithful enough to come to him and ask in faith, believe that he can handle it this morning. Guess what? He's got the whole world in his hands, Brother James, like we sang just a few weeks ago. He's got your situation in his hands this morning. He's got your problem. He's got He's got whatever heartache you've got going on this morning. Guess what? It's in his hands, and nothing's too big for God this morning. I want to ask you to raise your hand toward heaven one more time as they give us some music this morning. We want to just see God's face just for a few minutes this morning, call on his name, and ask his blessings on us. I know we've got different ones that are sick, and uh, Brother Keithy called this morning and different things, but uh, God already already knows. But if you got something this morning going on, just raise that hand toward heaven for a minute. Let God see it this morning. Hallelujah. Ask Brother Marty if he will lead us out and I'll pray together. Blessed Jesus, Masters, we come to your throne of glory and grace this morning, Lord. Lord, we love you this morning, Lord. Lord, we sense, Lord, that you're near this morning. Oh, God, you see the heaviness that's on us, Lord, as we've lost one of our, one of our family members this morning. You've called them home, oh, God. Lord, we know they're better off this morning, Jesus. We know that, Lord, but it doesn't ease the pain, Lord, of separation this morning, Lord. We pray for peace this morning. We pray for strength, oh God. We ask you, Lord, to let's let your angels encamp about us this morning, Lord, and to, Lord, hover around us this morning, Lord, and meet all these needs, not just one need, but all the needs of the hour, Lord. You see the different ones that are sick in body this morning, they're battling the flu symptoms, viruses that are going on, Lord. We ask you to heal them, Lord, and touch them, Lord. And, Lord, there's others here that are fighting diseases and sicknesses this morning. Morning, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to pour in the oil and the wine, oh God, this morning, Lord, and just to begin to heal their bodies, Lord, to touch them, Lord. And Lord, there's family, a family crisis going on, Lord. If there's division, Lord, in families this morning, Lord. Lord, we plead your blood this morning, Lord. Bring them back together, Lord. And Lord, there's somebody here struggling, Lord, financially, Lord. And Lord, we pray for a breakthrough this morning, Lord. And Lord, maybe there's one here that's just simply struggling this morning just to hang on. They're just struggling to hang on to their faith, Lord. Struggling to hang on, Lord, to you, Jesus. Lord, let them reach up this morning and realize you've not walked away from them, Lord. Lord, but you're still there, Lord. The Word says you stick it closer than a brother this morning, Lord. Nothing this morning, God, is impossible to those that simply believe this morning, Lord. Lord, move around this auditorium this morning, Lord, and touch, Lord, your people this morning, Lord. Lord, touch our church family this morning, Lord. Lord, let your healing power and your virtue flow this morning, Lord. We need you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We need you, Lord. Lord, begin to pour the oil and the wine, Lord. Bring us close to you, Lord. Move this morning, we pray, Lord. Touch our hearts, Lord. Draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name, we ask these things this morning. In Jesus' wonderful name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 God is good this morning. Amen. Oh, he's better than that. God is good this morning. Well, regardless of what you're struggling with or what you're going through this morning, he's faithful. Amen. He doesn't give up on you. You may give up on him, but he never gives up on you. And if you're here this morning, you've got the breath of life in you. Guess what? There's a chance for you. God wants to make a way for you this morning. He wants to make a way for you and begin to make life better for you. We do want to, those of you that most, I guess, maybe some new ones here don't know, but uh, for the most of us, know the brother, everyone home be with the Lord uh, this week here. And I uh, want to hold up Sister Jane and the family up in prayer. I do want to make this announcement before we get started. The visitation is Tuesday night at Ponder's. Is that right, Sister Janie? Five to seven at Ponder's, and then the funeral's going to be here starting at 12 o'clock Wednesday morning. If you can be here by 10, he'll be here at 10. Right. He'll be here by 10. It starts at 12, and he's going to be buried over at uh, Bloomfield at the uh, military cemetery over there. So I'll be much in prayer if you can make it support. Amen. Amen. You can be here. If you can't be for both of them, be here for, for whatever you can. But uh, it won't be the same without him here. Amen. It won't be the same, but guess what? He's, he's met his reward, Brother Jerry. 
well, that's weak this morning, saints. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a joy celebration. He's, he's made his reward. He's met it. He's, he's fought the good fight of faith. He's finished the course. He's kept the faith. And what he's done, we need to do. Fight the good fight of faith. Keep the course. Because we're all going to the same place. We all have that same, Sister Marilyn, the same place we want to go to, and that's heaven. And to get there, we've got to be faithful. We've got to fight the good fight of faith. And uh, so support of all possible to do. I know Brother Kurt's still battling for his life. Brother Donald's brother-in-law in, in uh, Texas and uh, needs a touch from the Lord. Needs, uh, they're praying for somebody to get to him and to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with him before it's too late. So we need salvation in, in uh, Kurt's life. So be much in prayer for this. God can send somebody. He can send somebody, Brother Marty, before it's too late. And, and uh, that soul can also make heaven their home too. We have your Bibles this morning. I'm going to look at a thought this morning and uh, just desire your prayers this morning. And uh, we're starting. Uh, we're starting Mark. I think that's the first one I got up there. It may not be. I can't remember now. That's the first one I gave him up there further over here. But anyway, uh, Mark chapter seven. Or chapter six. I'm sorry, Mark chapter six. I'll get it right here in a minute. Mark chapter six. Anyway. Uh, I guess is a timely subject, and uh, we we all go through these things, Brother Travis. Storms of life. Hey, Amen. There's not a one of us in here that this at a place in our life, and you'll never be at a place in your life where you don't go through a storm, you don't go through a battle. First and foremost, Sister Carolyn, it's called life. We battle storms. It's, it's storms. We, uh, you know, uh, storms are seasonal. Now stay with me here just a few minutes this morning. Storms are seasonal, and they're also dangerous. In the natural, storms come, do they not? We, we've already seen, you know, if you watch the weather, you know, already been, I think it's in Mon Montana or someplace up, already got snow this year. Already got some snow, you know. You look down on the, Brother Jerry, uh, the last hurricane that come through, you know, down on the East Coast, you know. Uh, storms just show up sometimes, Sister Valor. We don't, we don't know why or when, but they just show up. But the great thing about them, they are seasonal. They don't last forever. Hello, somebody. It's storms do not last, Brother Charlie, forever. They will pass through. If we do what we know to do in the natural, they'll show up, and they can be dangerous, Right? Sure, they can be dangerous. Storms can be dangerous and natural. Storms are seasonal. Storms can be dangerous. However, if you prepare yourself, you can survive the storms. Hello, somebody. Thank God for our technology, for our weather. Sister Valley, we know ahead of time now in advance if a, if a tornado's coming. We get the warnings. We get the National Weather Advisory to show up that it's coming. We know in the wintertime if a blizzard's coming, Brother Travis, we get the warnings way ahead of time. We know if it's a, uh, you don't have to, some, if you look outside at the right time of the year, you know, Sister Margaret, we see the storm clouds rising. Nobody's got to tell us it's going to rain. We know it's coming. We see the thunder, we hear the thunder and the lightning off in the distance. It don't take a rocket science to realize, hey, it's about to storm. And what do we do when those storms show up? We should prepare. We should prepare for what's about to take place. When a tornado comes up, Brother Charlie, we don't go outside in the yard and watch it and take pictures. Huh? You don't go out. If it's, if, if it's wintertime and a blizzard's coming, you don't go out there in shorts and sandals and say, man, I want to watch this snowfall. Huh? You got more problems than a blizzard coming if that's what you do. <laughs> If it's a hurricane down on the East Coast like they had just a, a few months ago, you don't go outside and stand and watch it. Huh? What do you do? You prepare. You prepare. Brother Mike, we get ready for what's about to take place. If we get, to, we get the weather advisory, a tornado's coming, what do you do? You take cover. You prepare for what's about to happen. If it's a blizzard in the wintertime, what do you do? You stock up with food. You stay indoors. You prepare for what's about to take. It, whatever the storm is, we prepare for it. Amen? We get ready for what's about to happen. We get ready because if we're not prepared, storms can be dangerous. They can be harmful to us in the natural. People always, and I know we can prepare and sometimes bad things do happen. But if you don't take the preliminary precautions, Brother Marty, trouble can happen. Things can happen to the place it can take your life. However, if we prepare, we can survive the storms. Life is just like the weather. Sometimes it brings storms into our lives. 
I know we would all like for it to be about 70 to 75 degrees all year round, wouldn't we? Man, we know we would. Sure we would. We'd love to have it right there where it's just comfortable all year round. Not 110 degrees in the shade, not 20 below zero. We'd take good weather all year round. Tropical breeze, huh? Just feeling good all the time. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Sure it would. But guess what? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And we can sit back here this morning and think, Brother Mike, storms ain't coming my way. We can sit back and think trouble's never going to come my way. We can sit back and think no harm's ever going to come my way. And guess what? It ain't going to happen. It will happen. Sooner or later, you're going to walk into a valley. Sooner or later, a storm's going to blow up. Sooner or later, something that you didn't expect is going to happen. It just will happen. It's called life. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust alike. It happens, but thank God they're just seasonal. Storms come through, and they blow right on through and pass by. Sometimes they stay longer than other storms do, but they will pass by. It won't last forever. And the spiritual storms in our life, Brother Marty, I know sometimes they're worse than others. I know sometimes we walk through a valley, and it seems like we ain't never getting out, and it seems like circumstance ain't never going to change, but you can rest assured it's only going to be in your life for a season. God will make a way out. He says he makes a way where there seems to be no way. If we keep walking, Brother Jerry, we keep being faithful, we'll find our way out of a season of storms in our life. He'll make a way for us. He st the Bible says he's sticking closer than a brother. He knows what you're going through this morning. We love to have nice weather all the time in the natural. We love to have it, the conditions we like to. We'd also like that in the, in the spiritual when we love for things not to happen to our family. We'd love not to get sick. We'd love not to lose our job. We'd love for all these things not to happen. But they're going to. It's just going to happen every now and then. Sometimes we find that a storm has come up in our lives. And if you don't correctly handle the life storms, you find yourself in harm's way. Have you ever heard that phrase, in harm's way? That means, you know what? That means it's coming right down the turnpike and you're, you're dead on course to meet it. You get in harm's way. You know it's coming. There's no doubt about it. And Sister Carolyn, it's coming your way in the natural, and you've got to prepare for it. Guess what? There's also storms in the spiritual realm that if we're not careful, we get in harm's way. No, I'll keep preaching. <laughs> Sometimes it, we get in harm's way. Here's what you need to understand this morning. If you're taking notes, you need to write this down. What you do in the storm is vital to your success through the storm. Let me ready to say that again. If you want to take notes, you can write that down. What you do in the storm is vital to your success through the storm. Sometimes we stay in storms, Brother Mike, longer than we have to. In the spiritual realm, I'm not talking natural. In the spiritual realm, sometimes, Brother Charlie, we stay in the storm longer than we have to because we're not prepared, we're not doing the right things. And sometimes the Lord allows us to stay there longer than we ought to. Sometimes we walk through the valley longer than we have to because he said, I made a way out. You just ain't listening. I prepared the steps for you to get out of this a little bit faster. You just ain't walking down the pathway I prepared for you. I made a way for you to get out of this thing, but you just ain't listening. I want you to go left, and you're wanting to go right. So you know what he says? Go ahead and go right for a while. Stay here for a while longer. It's okay with me. That journey that the children of Israel took out of Egypt shouldn't have been a 40-year journey. But because they disobeyed, because they wouldn't listen, you know what he said? Take another trip around the mountain. And when you go around it, go back again. And keep going. And they kept going, sister, for 40 years. Shouldn't have took that long. But that storm stayed a while longer than it ought to. Sometimes we stay in harm's way and things happen longer because we don't, we don't do what's vital to our success to get through the storm. Natural storm warnings show up. The weather bureau, the weather advisories come out. We get weather alerts that tell us prepare. It's coming your way to prepare the, the storm. Whatever it may be is coming. Get ready. Prepare. Uh, hunker down. Whatever you want to say. Get all things together. Get in a storm show. Whatever you've got to do, be prepared. We get the warnings. Guess what? There's also spiritual warnings in your life to be prepared for what the enemy's trying to do to you. Hello, somebody. Why don't you turn to 2 Corinthians right quick? 
2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Notice what it says here. Least Satan should get an advantage of us for what? What's the rest of it say? For we are not ignorant of his devices. Least Satan should get advantage of us for we are not ignorant of how he moves, how he operates. How are you ignorant of how he operates? If you're not praying and fasting and staying close to Jesus. That's how he sneaks up on you. That's how he gets a foothold. That's how he blows you out of the water sometimes. You're not prepared for it. You know why? You quit praying. You quit fasting like you ought to. You, quit, you don't stay in the Word like, uh, like you know you need to. And then all of a sudden you're not doing everything you know to do. And all of a sudden uh, you know, our flesh gets tickled. And all of a sudden we get a fancy over here to do this, do that. And all of a sudden we find out, man, how did I get here? How did I get in this storm? How did I get in this situation? How did this blow up in my life? You wouldn't take the, you wouldn't take the spiritual warning signs uh, properly like you should. Huh? Your kids just don't walk off a cliff overnight. Huh? If you're a mama or a daddy or grandma or grandpa sitting here, if you're praying and seeking God for them, you see the, the Lord gives you warning signs of they're going off the wrong way. They're taking the wrong road here. They're not doing what they need to do, and he'll give you the warning signs. You need to wake up and get involved here. You need to, you need to take control of something here. You need to start praying. He'll give you warning signs. Hello, somebody. The Spirit wants to talk to us and give us warnings, Brother Jerry, of when bad things are about to happen. Uh, this is about to come up in your life. This is about to happen. This is about to transpire. You need to prepare for this. And if we're doing, Sister Michelle, what we know to do, it says right here, we're not ignorant of his devices. Mm. Now, now, I know you say, well, Brother Tom, what about storms? That, you know, storms come in unawares. Yeah, I, I didn't say things wouldn't happen to us. But there's a difference in a storm and sin. And when he tries to creep into you with sin, and when he has to try to tear you up and warp, we ought to be prepared, Brother Jerry. We ought to be able to say, no, 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 this, this ain't right here. The Holy Ghost is telling me this. This is trouble right here. I need to stay away from this. The Spirit of God is telling me I don't need to get involved in this over here. This is not right. This is contrary to the Word of God. I need to stay away from that. Uh, what, let me let you on a little secret. Whatever takes you out of church probably ain't good. Huh? Whatever takes you out of church service probably ain't a good thing. Huh? Whatever takes you away from a prayer meeting probably not a good thing. Hello, somebody. Whatever draws you away from the Spirit of God, guess what? That's not a good thing. Huh? It don't take a rocket science to figure out a lot of this stuff. Huh? It don't take a high IQ to figure out some of these things. We just got to wake up and, and listen to what God tells us. Anything that draws us away from where we ought to be, Sister Carolyn, ain't right. Hello. Oh. If, it's, if it's contrary to the Word, God will give us spiritual warning. The Spirit of God will prepare us. How do we prepare for things? We prepare by praying. Fasting and walking in faith, not by sight. The Bible says one place, one familiar verse, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Several keys to going through storms of life, and if you stay with me a few minutes, I'll try to get through them all. Oh, what I've got down here. There's some correct ways in handling storms, and there's some incorrect ways in handling storms. I said a while ago, if there's a blizzard coming in, in the natural and you've got warning signs, you don't go outside in some shorts and flip-flops and say, I'm going to sit here on the, in a, on the uh, lawn chair in the front yard and watch it. They don't do that. <laughs> if a tornado's coming, you don't go out there in harm's way and stand and say, man, I'm going to watch this wind blow. Uh, yeah. Huh? You just don't do those kind of things, you know. Okay. There's good ways to prepare for storms, and there's bad ways to prepare for storms. And really, be preparing bad is not, you're not even prepared. You're just doing wrong things. Same thing in the spiritual. There's correct ways to be prepared for storms, and then there's bad ways to prepare for storms. Again, I said a while ago, anything that takes you out of church is not a, is not a correct way to prepare for a spiritual storm. Hmm? Alcohol is not a correct way to prepare for a storm. Huh? Hello, somebody. Huh? Doom and gloom and agony on me. Huh? If, if life is this bad in church, I'll go back to what I used to do. Well, guess what? That's not a right answer. That's not a good answer. That's not right. Drugs. Hey, if they ain't no better than this, I'll just go back out and do what I, That's the enemy lying to you. 
That's the enemy trying to trick you into getting back what you uncleanliness, lasciviousness, fornication, adultery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, wrath, emulations, strife, seditions, murders, suicide, and such are all works of the flesh. Not the right way to handle storms in the spiritual realm. It's amazing. I've, I've heard, Brother Joe, over the years, people that, that for whatever reason, the church ain't going the way they think they ought to. They go back to their li own lifestyle. And I'm thinking, man, that, how in the world? You know, yeah, going to church ain't always, you know, glamour and everything going good. There, there's some tough times in church. I mean, there, there's, there's this dry seasons we go through. But when the enemy can talk to you and the warning signs flash, and you still go back into what you used to do. That's not a good way to handle a storm. Hello, somebody. That's not a good way to handle a spiritual storm. We don't quit going to church because things are bad. We should go to church more when things are bad. Hello, somebody. Huh? We don't quit paying our tithes because money's got tight. We keep paying our tithes when money's tight. Hello, somebody. Huh? We don't quit praying because things ain't working out. I've been praying and I haven't seen an answer. I don't quit praying, Brother Marty. If anything, I pray more. I don't let my faith waver because I haven't seen God move like I think he ought to. I keep my faith in God because I believe greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I'm going to keep walking by faith and not by sight because I know sooner or later he's going to turn this thing around in my favor if I keep doing what I know to do. We fight the good fight of faith. We don't throw up the white flag of surrender and quit. We dig in. We, we continue to do those things we know to do, even though we haven't seen victory, even though we haven't seen things change. Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Verse 45. And this is a very, very familiar story here. Not a story, it actually happened, but uh, I want to dissect it a little bit this morning. Mark chapter 6, verse 45. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship. Turn to your neighbor and say, never get in the ship. Tell them, get in the boat. Get in the boat. Save his place in the boat. Hmm? Save his place in the boat. Jesus tells you to do something. That's the safest place to be. I don't care what he tells you to do. If he tells you to do something, you're in the center of God's will, that's the best place to be. Hello, somebody. He told them to get in the boat. Straightway, he constrained his disciples to get in the ship and to go to the other side before Bethsaida while he sent away the people. And when he sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when evening was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing. For the wind was contrary unto them and about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them walking upon the sea and would have passed them by. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said unto them, What? Whew. Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Boy, ain't that the greatest words you can hear during a storm? Ain't that the greatest comforting words that we can ever know going through a storm? When things have looked bad in our lives and things are not looking good and the, and the waves keep crashing onto the boat, Sister Carol, in our lives, and things are not going good, and, we, and then we hear him say, be a good cheer. It'll be all right. It's me. I'll be, it'll be all right. Just, just keep rowing. It'll be all right. And he went unto them into the ship, and the wind, the wind ceased. And they were so amazed in themselves beyond measure and wonder, for they considered, now notice this, and we're going to dissect this. Give me just a few minutes to show this one. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. He just performed a miracle before they got in the boat. He'd fed the 5,000. And just that quick, Brother Travis, their hearts were hardened. They forgot how great God was or Jesus was, how great he could do things. And now all of a sudden a storm comes up, and now they've, they've lost, well, pff, guess we're going down. Nobody's going to help us. And they forgot, it says here, they had forgot the miracle of the loaves. Uh -uh -uh. How many times has Jesus done something for you in your life? Huh? He's done something for you in your life. And the next time a storm comes up, you've forgotten the miracle he done for you before. 
Huh? He's brought you through so many things in life. And the next time a storm comes up, you've forgotten all the good things and the greatness of God because of the storm you're in. And God, help us. Help us not to walk by sight and walk by faith. He began to tell them to hang on to do all these things. The first thing we need to understand, the first thing, if you want to take notes, you can write this down. The first thing you need to, to understand about correctly handling life storms is that you're on a divine journey. No way, man, but one or two. You're on a divine journey. You're here for such a time as this. You're here because God has ordained you and set you forth to be here. Regardless of what's going on in your life, He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly the storms you're facing, the battle you're in, and it's not snug up on Him. If He's called you to this place, He'll see you through the next one. You're on divine journey. John 15, 16 says, You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. It's a journey that is ordained by the Lord. It's a divine call, a divine journey for a divine purpose. Listen to me. We're all striving for a higher ground, a, a closer walk with Him. We're trying to get somewhere, trying to get something in the spiritual realm. Listen to me. It's not just us. It's not me in the natural, but a divine call on a divine journey for a divine purpose. If God's called you to do something, and He's called you out to do something in life, guess what? He expects you to finish it. And if he's called you to do something, he's called you out for such a purpose or whatever it is, guess what? The enemy's not going to let you do that just, just for an easy walk. Hmm? He's called you to preach. It won't be easy. He's called you to sing. You'll have some tough times. He's called you to pray. You're going to find out you can't find time to pray. The enemy will give you every reason not to. You're going to find out whatever God's called you into, you're going to go through a storm. It's not always going to work out like it ought to start now. There'll be trials. There'll be troubles. There'll be heartaches. There'll be times you might even wonder in the natural, should I keep going? But, Brother James, it's a divine journey. If he's given you a vision, if he's given you a purpose in life, if he showed you something spiritual, if he's given you a dream, then guess what? He didn't do that just for you to fall off or let it go. He's given it to you to see it finished. He told them what when they first started out? Get in the boat. You go on to the other side. Whew. The journey was already set in motion. It was a divine journey. They were going to the other side. Regardless of what happened from the first start to the finish. Let me let you all know say what happens, what happens with you from start to finish in the middle there, there's going to be some tough trials. One of the, one of the, one of the pet peeves of mine, Brother Jerry, is when people get, first get saved. And I hear somebody whisper in their ears, oh, everything's going to be okay now. Everything's going to be fine. You got G, it's going to be fine now. No, you just lied to them. Yeah, you got Jesus on your side. He's going to help you fight the battles. He'll see you through them, but you're still going to have trials, hurts, and heartaches. Huh? You're still going to have times of, of trouble. You're going to have times of sorrow. It's, it's life. It's going to happen. But we have to understand, Brother Travis, he's destined us to get to the other side. Hello, somebody. He's destined us to get to the other side. You're on a divine journey. The Bible says, uh, Delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. A lot of times we desire things in the natural. We want a big house. We want something in the natural. We think it will satisfy us. Guess what? It won't satisfy. But when you're on a divine journey and the spiritual things, and he gives you the, the, a divine purpose, the desires of your heart is what he places in your heart so you can strive to achieve that desire to get to where you're going, to get to where you need to be. Verses 46 and 47, he says, He sent them away and departed the mountain to pray, and when the evening was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he was alone on the land. But watch this. The ship was now in the midst of the sea. The disciples are exactly where God wanted them to be because he sent them. But you don't know what I'm going through, Pastor. You don't know how bad my journey is. You don't know what I'm going. You don't know what I faced this week. You don't know what I've been walking down this last month. You're exactly where God wants you. You're exactly where God wants you. Oh, it might be a rough road. I'm not saying that. It might be a tough journey. I'm not saying that. But God knows exactly where you are this morning. He knows exactly what you're facing. He knows how bad the road's got. He knows how rough it's been. And he's, the Bible says he's sticking close to the brother. He's not going anywhere. Keep the faith. 
Keep walking forward. You're exactly where God wants you. You're exactly where he needs you to be. The disciples are exactly where God wanted them to be because he sent them. The second thing, if you're taking notes, number two, to understand that uh, about correctly handling life storms is to understand that you are exactly where God wants you to be. You might say, you don't know where I am, what I'm going through. You don't know how bad the journey is, what I've had to face to get here. But guess what? You're exactly where God wants you at. Why? Or how can you say this? Because you're on a divine journey. You're on a divine journey. It's a spiritual journey, not a natural. You're right where he's sending you, and you haven't finished the, you haven't finished the race yet. You're in the midst of where he sent you. You're going somewhere. Old song says, wouldn't take nothing from a journey now. Huh? How many know that song? Got to make it to heaven somehow. Wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. Woo! You've come too far, church, to go back. Brother Charlie, you've come too far now to turn around and walk back. We've come too far, church, to turn around and just give up and say it's too tough. The mountain's too high. The road is too rough. Guess what? You've come too far. The finish line is within sight now, church. Jesus is getting ready to come back. I can't say exactly when or how soon, but I can tell you one thing. We're closer today than we was yesterday. Hello, somebody. And the signs of the times are lining up, uh, and I want you to know something. It's going to be soon. He's coming back, uh, and I've come too far, fought too many battles, uh, had too many spiritual scars on me, sister, to quit now and say, I can't make it. Uh, now I've got to get my mind made up. Oh, yeah. I'm going to walk the last mile of the way. I'm not giving up now. I've done too much now. I've been too far to give up. He knows where you're at. He knows what you're going through. He knows the battles you're facing. And you're too close to victory to throw in the white flag of surrender now. You're exactly where he wants you to be. You're exactly on course. These people like to talk about how bad. I'm going to get off key here just for a minute. These people like to talk about how bad Sister Mary the church is in, how disarray it's in, how oh, it wasn't like this when I was going. Guess what? The church is exactly where Jesus wants it to be. Amen. Well, if I was in charge, I wouldn't allow this to go on. Well, he ain't allowing it to go on. He knows who's right and who's wrong. Huh? Yeah. He knows who's walking in the spirit realm and who ain't. He knows who's phony and who's not phony. Huh? The true bride's, the true bride's making things ready, preparing everything. No, I won't go there. I'll, keep, I'll stay on course. <laughs> I'll stay on course. Verse 45, story, he constrained the disciples to get in the ship to go to the other side before Bethsaida, and he sent them away. Notice he constrained his disciples. The word constrained means to order, to force, or to command. This was a journey that the disciples were sent on, not one they just decided to take. When God calls you, and you know it's him, there's divine purpose behind it. I didn't decide just to start preaching, Brother Mike, all those years ago. If I would have, I wouldn't be around this long. It's a divine call, and I'm not bragging on myself. If you do anything for the Lord, it's a divine call. You sing, you play an instrument, you teach, you're a prayer warrior, you're, you're an evangelist, you're a missionary. That's a divine call. And you do it regardless of circumstances, regardless of scenarios in life, regardless of the obstacles that you may face. Why? It's a divine call. It's a divine call. You continue to move forward. And he saw them, verse 48, and he saw them tolling and rowing. For the wind was contrary unto them, and about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea. He would have passed them by. He saw them, Jesus saw them, even though they couldn't see, even though they couldn't see Jesus, he saw them. He knows where you're at. He sees you. He sees you this morning. The third thing to understand about correctly handling life storms is to trust that he is watching you even though you can't trace him. Let me say one or two amens. Let me say that again. One of the greatest things you need to understand is to be faithful in your storms because just because you can't see him or feel him doesn't mean he doesn't see you. The disciples couldn't see him, but he saw them. How many have ever been in a storm and just felt like Jesus ain't nowhere around? Every hand in this place ought to go up. I don't care how long you've been walking with God or how short you've been walking. There's been times that, that he just stands still and he lets you have it for a little while. Sure he does. What did Jesus say on the, on the cross? 
Lord, Lord, why has thou forsaken me? He felt the whole, the whole weight of the world there for a little while. He felt all the weight of the world, all the, all the stuff that was going on. He felt it all for a little while. Jesus, God was still there. He didn't walk away. God didn't walk away from you. Sometimes he just lets you carry the load for a little while by yourself. But he knows where you're at. You may not be able to find him. You've got to keep trusting him. And you've got to trust that he's watching you even though you can't trace him. Look at Job. We missed in the book of Job in the men's classroom. The book of Job, chapter 23. And there's a whole lot more to Job than just patience. No, you need to read the book of Job. A whole lot more to him just, to, just having patience like everybody talks about the patience. Job, chapter 23. Job, the 23rd chapter. Verse 3. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. Whew. Job didn't do nothing wrong, did he? No, he didn't. But he said, boy, if I could find him right now, boy, I'd come to where he's sitting at if I could find him. And I'm just paraphrasing the verse there. He said, boy, I can't. I ain't done. Job, he didn't do anything wrong, did he? Just go, go read it. But he says here, boy, if I could find him. Brother Martin, if I could find him, I'd go sit down with him. I'd go sit down. And I skip down to verses 8, Job 23, verses 8, 9, 10, 11. Notice what Job says here. Behold, I go forward, huh, but he's not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, then I cannot see him. But notice what Job says. But he knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Woo! I can't find him on the left. I can't find him on the right. Uh, I'm trying to reach forward. It's a slender. I can't, re I can't find him nowhere. I'm reaching out. He's not behind me nowhere. I'm looking and I'm searching. Uh, it seems like he's drew his presence away from me. But Job says, when he comes back around, woo, when he comes back around, he'll find me faithful. He'll find me doing what he's called me to do. He'll find me doing what he's, he's predestined me to do, to preach, teach, whatever it is. Brother James, we've got to do it. He knoweth the way I take. He knows where I'm at. And he says, when he comes back around, I'll be doing what he's called me to do. He says, he'll find me as gold. Whew. I'll come forth as gold. You can't come forth as gold if you ain't doing what you know to do. Huh? You can't quit in trials. You can't quit in tribulations. You can't quit in certain circumstances that are hard and the hardships come. You can't quit. It's the pressure, Brother James. It's the pressure that makes coal become what? Gold. It's pressure that makes saints shine like gold. It's pressure of the trials and tribulations that come our way and we can't do nothing but just trust him and walk by faith and pray, Brother Jerry, and lean on him that calls us to shine like gold when we come through trials and storms. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, whoo, how could we make it, Brother Jerry, if it wasn't for him on our side? Job said, I'll come forth like gold. You need to understand that storms of life to trust him. He's watching you even though you can't find him. Verse 48 back there says they were toiling and roaring. Toiling means to struggle, uh, to torture, to vex with pain of body and mind. The disciples were roaring to get to the other side, but they're toiling, but they're toiling with struggles or struggling. The wind was contrary, right? And when God sends you on a divine journey to do what you're called to do, regardless of how hard it may seem, because he has his eyes on you, you'll make it. See, they were, going, they were going to the other side, and what was going on, the wind was contrary. It was against them. It's easy to sail when the wind's at your back, ain't it? Huh? Well, it's easy to sail then. You throw the sails up on the boat, man, the wind gets behind the sails. And, man, it's easy sailing, Brother Mike. You're going with the wind and the waves, and, man, it's... That's, but man, <laughs> is there sinning when we go the other way, though? When everybody's going left and God tells us to go right. When everybody else is walking and he tells you to stand still. That's when the wind gets contrary. That's when, that's when it gets hard to do what God's called you to do. He told them you're going to the other side. Well, the enemy didn't want them going to the other side. 
See, the enemy didn't want you to finish your job or your, 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 whatever he's called you to do. He didn't want you to finish. He didn't want you to sing another song. He didn't want you to play another instrument. He didn't want you to pray another prayer. He didn't want me to preach another message. Huh? And sometimes to do what he's called you to do, the wind blows against you. Huh? Sometimes it's hard to sing that song, isn't it? Sure it is. Sometimes it's hard to teach that message. Sometimes it's hard to, to get through a, a, a message you're preaching and you just feel the winds against you. It's contrary for whatever reason. That's what they were doing. They were going to the other side. The wind had come up. And now all of a sudden they're rowing and rowing trying to get. Now they weren't making no headway. They weren't making no progress. It would have been a whole lot easier to turn around and go back. So it's exactly what the enemy wants you to do this morning. Quit. Go back. Give up. Quit. It's too hard. If, it, if God had something for you, it wouldn't be this hard, is what he'll tell you. If God meant for you to be successful, you wouldn't be going through this trial right now. If God had something for you and something great for you, why is it such a struggle to get to it? All these words just whisper in your ear. Huh? Don't act like I ain't ever whispered something to you like that. Why be faithful? Nothing's happening. Why keep praying your children's getting worse? Huh? Why keep paying your tithes? You're still going to belly up in your finances. Why? Why? Trick of the enemy. It's a trick of the enemy. We keep going, Sister Michelle, because we know we walk by faith and not by sight. We don't quit praying. We don't quit giving. We don't quit showing up. We don't, keep doing, we don't quit doing the small things he's called us to do. We don't quit preaching. We don't quit singing. We keep going. The wind's always going to blow, uh, blow against us in the natural. It will always be contrary to what the Word of God wants us to do. You don't think so? Look at the world today. Everything's against the body of Christ. Everything against the kingdom of God now. Laws, regulations, stipulations, all these things. Why? The enemy knows we got but just a short, he's got but just a short time to work. If he can get us to quit or back up or go the other way, we'll fall, we'll falter, we'll quit. There's no quit in us. We've got to keep going forward. The fourth thing you need to understand about correctly handling life storms is to keep doing what he's called you to do. Paul said it like this, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. If we don't see results, I've never understood this. If we don't see results, we want to quit. I don't understand. I, I guess it's the flesh, another way around it. But we shouldn't quit, Brother Chuck, because we don't see results. How many years did, how many years did Noah preach there was a flood coming? How many people did he get saved? Just his family, right? Just his family. That was it. Wow. But he keep preaching the same message. There's a flood coming. There's a flood coming. What are you building this big old boat for, Noah? What are you building this big old thing for? It's crazy. It's ridiculous. What, are you crazy? God told me there's a storm coming. God told me there's a flood coming. God told me there's a rain. Man, you're crazy. But he, keep, he kept preaching. He kept preaching. He kept preaching. He kept preaching. I want to tell you something, church. We're going to have to keep preaching. Amen. We're going to have to keep preaching to keep doing what we know to do. Amen. We may not see results, but that don't mean we quit. Because one of these days, our faithfulness is going to pay off. It'll pay off. If it doesn't pay off for anybody else, it'll pay off for me because i got to do what God's called me to do. If he's called you to do something, you're going to have to do what he's called you to do. You can't quit. One of these days, we're going to receive a payday. We can't, we can't quit because we don't see results. The fifth thing to understand about correctly handling life storms is don't let the direction of the wind stop you or make you feel like you're doing something wrong. Sometimes people speak for you, but mostly they will speak against you. Huh? Most times people speak against what you're doing when you're doing something for the Lord. Oh, you can't preach. You can't sing. You can't play an instrument. That'll never happen. You can't do this. You can't do that. Most time, most time, people pour negativity in you, Brother James, they do, they do positive. Amen. But when the wind's against you, we keep pressing. We keep rowing. We keep, we keep the oars in the water, and we keep rowing. We keep going the way God has called us to. We keep striving to go where God has ordered us to go. Verse 48 says, About the fourth watch of the night, he cometh to them walking upon the sea, and would have passed them late in the midnight hour, between, the third and six, or between three and six in the morning. Jesus came walking on the water, and would have passed them by. Here's the sixth thing you need to write down. I'm trying to hurry. The sixth thing 
to understand about correctly handling life storms is you have to expect God to show up. Hmm. You have to expect God to show up. Regardless of how dark the night is, Brother Mike, regardless of how bad things look, if we're children of the Most High and the blood of Jesus covers us and we're walking with Him, and we're we expect Him. We have to expect Him to show up. We have to expect Him to show up. The old song says He won't show up uh, when you want Him to, but He'll show up right on time. Woo! Mm. He'll be there when you need Him the most, Sister Valerie. He won't let us down. He's never let nobody down yet. He's not going to start today. We have to expect him to show up in our battles, in our trials, in our storms. We have to have the spirit of expectation that God is going to show up and change this and turn it around. He may not come when you think he should, but he's going to show up in your storm. So expect, for, expect him and look for him. The spirit of expectation, believing he can do all things, believing he's going to show up and change the circumstances. The seventh thing to understand about correctly handling life storms, and this is one most people miss, to listen for his voice in the midst of the storm. What did he say to him when they cried out to him? It is I. Be of good cheer. I want to tell you something. He's trying to talk to his people again this hour we're living in. He's not, he's not, he's not, his voice is not short, and he's not trying to be quiet to us, Sister Merrill. He wants to speak to all of us. We just got to get to a place where we listen. Isn't it, isn't it amazing, and, and, and it shouldn't be like this, but isn't it amazing that most of the time he gets our attention is when we have to go into a storm? And then for some reason, we're, we're more responsive to his voice. I don't know why it's like that, but usually he has to let us go through a storm or a storm comes in our life. Then we decide to pray a little harder. We decide to read our Bible a little bit more. We decide to dig in, and then we, all of a sudden we can hear his voice. He won't speak to us all the time. He shouldn't just speak to us in bad situations. I don't speak to my children, Brother Marty, when something bad has happened. I speak to them all the time. He won't speak to us all the time, not just when, when bad things happen. God still wants to speak to his people. He still wants us to hear his voice. I want you to turn to Luke right quick. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Luke 24. We'll start at verse 13. We won't read all this. We'll skip down. Luke 24, verse 13. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all things which had happened. And when it came to pass that while they communed together in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Now, again, he begins to talk, and we're going to, for just sake of time, we'll skip down in verse uh, 31. Verse 31 32. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Notice what verse 32 says. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us? By the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures. Hmm. Did not our hearts burn while he talked to us, didn't we? He still wanted to talk to us. He still wants to talk to us. We just got to recognize his voice. They walked with him out that journey there, showed up, Brother James, and began to talk to him. Hey, what's going on? I skipped a lot of it. Wait, what's going on with man? Where you been? Jesus has been taken up. And these last three days have been terrible, blah, 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 this, that, and the other, and all these crazy things have been going on in Jerusalem. Now Jesus is gone, and this, that, and the other. And all of a sudden, he opened up their eyes to him. And Brother James said, man, didn't our hearts burn while he was talking? Didn't we? Hmm. He still wants to talk to you this morning, church. He still wants to talk to us. We just got to come to a place where we can hear his voice and recognize it. So many times, Brother Jerry, we got so much junk going on, we can't hear him. We got too much going on in our lives, and he just says, I'm not going to compete with anything in your life. If you're not going to put me on the throne of your heart, I won't play second fiddle to nothing. Amen. So we don't hear him. And, and even though he's trying to shake us sometimes and get things out of our life and, and move things out, Sister Carol, so he can speak to us, we still don't pay attention to it sometimes. Well, if we just put him where he belongs in our hearts, he'd talk to us all the time. He said, didn't I? The eighth thing. The eighth thing, that was back verse 52 that we read. For they consider not the miracle of the loaves, for their hearts was hardened. 
before Jesus constrained them to get in the ship and go to the other side, he had just fed 5,000 men, not counting the women and children, with two fish and five loaves of bread. And the disciples collected 12 baskets of food afterwards. That was a miracle. But the disciples failed to remember the miracle of the past. The eighth thing you need to do going through a storm is to understand correctly about handling storms is you need to remember what God has already done for you, past miracles. What's the old song saying? I love to sing. We don't sing it right here. It's old. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. God help us. We forget on a Sunday morning, God moves and blesses us. And by Monday afternoon, we forgot what happened on Sunday. Come to church, we show up, run, dance, shout, pray, cry. God moves and blesses us. And by Monday afternoon, we forgot everything happened and we're in the middle of a storm at work or something going on. We forgot everything God's done. Now we think there's no way out. There's no help. We can't see it. That, ain't that what the disciples done? And they, just seen him, they just seen him, little boy, come by with his lunch. <laughs> hey, come here, bud. Huh? He prayed over and break it. And man, he pulled out so much. He fed 5,000 men. They saw it. They were there. They took up more than what they started out with. And then they get on a boat. Faith has vanished. Hope is gone. And the Bible says their heart was hardened. They forgot the miracle of the loaves. Mm, we need to remember past miracles when we get in the storm. Brother Charlie, we need to remember what God's already done. We need to remember, Brother Mike, what he's already brought us through. Sister Mary, we need to remember all the things he's already done for us. And we're going to another trial. We understand, you know what? He's brought me through all these other things in life. He'll get me through this. He's brought me through this. He's brought me through that. He's brought me through all these different circumstances. He's brought me through all these hardships and heartaches. What's one more? What's one more trial? What's one more valley? What's one more hardship? If he's brought me through a handful of them, he'll bring me through one more, surely. He's not brought me this far to let me down. He's not brought me this far to let me fail. He's not brought me this far that I'm going to pack up and go home. If he's brought me through something, he'll bring me through something else. If he's brought me through the valley, he'll bring me through another one. If he's brought me through a rocky place, he'll take me through another one. If he's brought me through the valley of dry bones, but I'm already He'll bring me through it again. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did back then, he's wanting to do today. But we've got to have the faith and blessed assurance that we understand he can do it. Storms shouldn't take us out. Storms ought to draw us closer. Isn't it amazing in a natural storm you get close to your family? Huh? Sure you do. Aunt Sally Sue's got a Got a storm shelter and a tornado's coming. Everybody's showing up. Huh? You get a cousin you ain't seen in 25 years show up because he thinks that he thinks it's about, it's about to happen. It's, but the town's gone. I'm showing up. I ain't seen in 25 years. I'm showing Hey, how you doing? Huh? Oh, yeah, they show up. Don't act like they won't. Huh? Blizzard shows up. You got a generator. They all coming over. Huh? They all showing up. Don't act like they're not. You got food. They coming. Huh? They got a generator over there. They can cook. I'm hungry. Let's go. I know that's a little bit funny stuff there. <laughs> but trials and storms ought to bring us closer to church too. Huh? Yeah. Amen. It ought to bring us closer. If we can show up because of Sister Mar Marilyn, we can show up at somebody's house because they've got a storm shelter for a tornado. Why can't we show up at church when somebody needs some support and some help? Huh? Why can't we show up and, and be a lifeline to somebody? You know, if, if somebody's going through something, we ought to, you know, if the whole body of Christ is going through something, if our local church is going through something, we, should, we shouldn't separate and be scattered. We ought to come together, dig in. Huh? And it shouldn't be just because something bad's happened that we show up together and, and begin to work together. We ought to do it all the time. I don't know where you're at this morning. I don't know what you're going through this morning. But I can grant you, you're either in a storm or you're getting ready to go into one. It's this life. But you go into them, you need to keep these facts that we, that we shared this morning with you. How to handle them. How to handle them. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning, if you will. I don't know how bad life has got on you this morning or how difficult circumstances may be. And maybe you're here this morning and you ain't going through anything. You better be thanking God. Give Him praise for it. Thank God because I'm going to tell you something. The wind can blow up in a hurry. 
circumstance can change quickly. And sometimes we get a long warning sign and we know what's going to happen. And sometimes we get a short warning sign. God will give you the warning sign to be prepared for a spiritual storm. We'll just watch and listen. But we've got to be prepared. We've got to prepare ourselves. I'm going to ask you to bow your head this morning. Nobody looking around. I don't know what you're going through this morning. If nothing's going on in your life. Maybe that, that's, that's great. But if you're in the middle of a storm this morning, I just want you to slip your hand up toward heaven and say, yeah, I, I, I'm in the middle of it right now. I'm in the middle of it. And right now, I might not even see a way out. I don't know who you are this morning or what you're going through. Maybe you just think, I don't see a way out of this thing right now. Jesus told me to get in the boat, and now the winds come up. Jesus told me to get in the boat, and now the boat's taking on water. Waves are crashing on it. If something don't change soon, we're going down. Maybe that's how you feel this morning. I don't know. But if he's told you to get in the boat, go to the other side, you can rest assured you're getting to the other side. It may be a tough journey. It may be a long road, but you're going to get there. But between now and then, you've got you to do what you know to do. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand up one more time if you will. Yeah, I'm going through something. Yeah, I, I need some help this morning. I don't see a way out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we pray this morning, I'm going to ask you to take a neighbor there by the hand, somebody there close to you. As we pray this morning, and you need special prayer this morning, I'm going to ask you to take that neighbor by the hand you got there and let us pray with you this morning. Maybe you need some special prayer this morning. You need somebody to anoint you and pray with you. Maybe you don't. But that's fine. But if you do, I want to give you that opportunity to come forward and say, yeah, I, want some, I, don't, I need some prayer this morning. I'm going to be anointed. Nick. Let God help me this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to your throne of glory and grace this morning, Jesus, we love you and praise you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your many wonderful blessings, Lord. We know that life can be troublesome, Lord. Life can be hard, Lord. Life can be tough on us, oh God. But Lord, we know that you have everything in your hands this morning, Lord. You see all the things we're going through, Lord. Nothing has snuck up on you, Lord. And Lord, you've tried to give us warning signs, Lord. You've tried to give us uh, spiritual warning signs that things are about to happen, things are about to change, Lord. The atmosphere is about to change. And sometimes we just don't pay attention, Lord, till we're already in the middle of the storm, Lord. But Lord, we can rest assured in one thing. You've challenged us to get in the boat. You've challenged us, Lord, to stay in the boat. You've assured us we're going to the other side. And regardless of how tough the battle, regardless of how tough the weather, regardless of how tough, Lord, things may be, Lord, or maybe we're uh, towing right now, Lord, roaring right now, and the waves keep coming at us, Lord. Lord, we've got to stay the course. We've got to stay the course. Help us this morning, I pray. Lord, we ask your blessings on us this morning, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to touch these hands that went up, Lord. You see, Lord, the situation, Lord. You see, Lord, the storms of life, Lord, that we're facing. We ask you, Lord, this morning, Lord, to give us, Lord, uh, anchors that are hold this morning, Lord. Give us anchors, Lord, that it will sustain us, Lord. Give us anchors that will encourage us, Lord. Lord, let us not forget the past miracles and things you've done for us already, Lord. Lord, we ask your blessings on Heartland Harvest, Lord. Help us to do all that we can for you, Lord. Lord, help us to help others, Lord, that are in storms, Lord, that are in harm's way, that we can help them, Lord, to the other side. Lord, let us hear your voice. Speak to us, we pray, Lord, for we're in the middle of storms and battles, Lord, and we know that you say it's me. Be a good cheer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to your neighbors. A neighbor, stay in the boat. Stay in the boat. Don't get out now. We're going to the other side. It's been, it's been, it's already been destined for us, Brother Jerry. Jesus has got a place for us. And yeah, the rest of the is going to boost up next week, right quick. We thank you for uh, seeing our service this morning, for watching us. We hope something was said that stirs your heart and calls you to want to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Word tells us in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to reconcile us back to Him. We just want to pray with you right quick if you'll give us a chance to pray with you. 
Jesus, Lord, as we come to your throne right now, we just ask you, Lord, whoever's listening today, whoever saw this message, Lord, their heart would be changed and turned for you, Jesus. Lord, they accept you as their Savior, Lord. We ask your blessings on whatever they're going through. Give them strength and a made-up mind to see it through with your help. In Jesus' name, amen. We want you to contact us, if you will. Follow us through heartlandharvest.org or follow us on Facebook. We hope to see you soon in our services. Amen.